Hey, this is Matt on this week's Driving Success Podcast. We're talking about some stuff that I think really, really matters. We're talking about company culture and core values. We're going to give you four primary takeaways on today's episode that I think can transform your business if you do it right. The first is we're talking about the importance of building your core values and your company culture. How do you do it? Number two is you got to learn how to visualize what it is that you want your company to look like long before it happens. Number three is you got to be relentless to live these core values, to manage to these core values, to hire and fire to these core values. I'm telling you, if you get your core values and your company culture right, 90% of the chaos that exists in your business will go away. So amazing podcast, and, and I hope you get my a passion and emotion through it of how important I believe culture and core values are to your business through today's podcast. Be safe, drive safe, and we'll see you down the road. Enjoy today's episode. Author of The Grit. Author of You Need More Money. Founder and president of Commercial Fleet Financing, it's Matt Monero. The Driving Success Podcast. Powered by Commercial Fleet Financing. Welcome to Driving Success, powered by Commercial Fleet Financing. I'm your host, Matt Monero, and I come to you each and every week from our studio and our headquarters in Dallas, Texas. Here's the problem with transportation companies. You guys think that your knowledge of transportation is what's going to make a great business, and the reality is it's not. What's going to make a great business is you understanding business. And that's the purpose of our podcast, Driving Success, is to teach you real, concrete, fundamental business strategies that test the time. And if you put them into play in your transportation business, you're going to end up with a great business. Today, I'm talking about something that is absolutely vital, and I didn't understand it early in my career, and it hurt us here at Commercial Fleet. If we had learned the importance of company culture and core values earlier, we would have been a better company earlier. We were just scared. We just needed revenue. We just had to survive. And you survive in business by generating revenue. And what happens when you chase revenue is you give up company culture and you give up core values. You trade the most important thing in business for revenue. And I'm here to tell you almost 25 years later since we started Commercial Fleet that we made a bad trade. We shouldn't have traded core values and chased revenue for as long as we did. Now that we're on the other side of the revenue scale, where we have revenue and repeat clients and and stability in the business, we are a much better company because we focused on culture and core values. Let me tell you why core values and culture mean so much. I believe that core values and culture fix 90% of the chaos that exist in your business. When you lock down your culture and your core values, your, your hiring problems go away. Your firing problems go away. Your managing problems go away. Your branding issues go away. Your core values and your culture get you off the hamster wheel that 99% of the 25 million small business owners in America are on. You know the hamster wheel I'm talking about. It's like, what fire am I putting out today? Who's going to let me down today? What problem is going to start the minute I turn the key and go into the office? And I lived that stuff, man, every day. And it wasn't for a year. It was for probably 15 of our 25 years in business. I lived like that. What a terrible way to live for you individually, but it's not just you. You know who else suffers? Your employees suffer. Your clients suffer. Your vendors suffer. And if we want to get real straight to the point on today's podcast, your family suffers. Man, you're not present with your spouse and you're not present with your children. You're freaking scared. You're preoccupied. The business is stealing your time 
from the people that matter most. It's just not the formula for success. So I'm going to give you some strategies here on the on the podcast today. I'm going to give you a download, free of charge download, um, that's going to help you crystallize and solidify these core values that translate to culture. I'm actually referring this as as to as part one, because I'm going to do a second core values podcast, and I'm also going to do a full company culture podcast. And that will be the foundation, the starting point of driving success podcast, because like I opened with, even though you're in transportation, you're really just in business. So just because you can drive a truck or just because you can deliver freight and just because you may do that exceptionally well, it does not translate to you being a great transportation company owner. Now, you might be asking, why do I have credibility to tell you that or even think that? What, who, what, what makes me so special? Well, number one, I started from nothing, just like you did. I started the business from a one-bedroom apartment with literally a phone and a folding table and a Yellow Pages. And I went to the trucking section of the Dallas Yellow Pages, and I cold-called trucking companies and said, are you in the market for to buy equipment? And if so, let me come on out and pitch you our financing. And we started with no clients, zero. And we built a real business after 25 years. But 15 of those years were hell. So I know what I'm talking about. The other reason I think I know what I'm talking about is because at Commercial Fleet, we have financed tens of thousands of transportation companies. We talk to thousands of transportation companies a month in an effort to do their financing for trucks and trailers and equipment. We hear the stories every single day from our clients of how difficult it is to be in the transportation industry. And the reason it's difficult is, yes, it is a challenging industry and there are ups and downs and pros and cons to it, but mostly because they were drivers who hated their boss and said, I'm going to go into business for myself. And so they took their primary skill of knowing how to drive a truck or run a, a backhoe for their construction company or tow a vehicle or deliver freight, and they translated that into business ownership. But as I said, that skill is not enough. Just because you can tow a car exceptionally well does not make you an exceptional business owner. And that's what most of our customers have become. And while some have done incredibly well, most, like me, are or were on the hamster wheel. Just spin in cycles. And there's a better way to do it. We got to get you out of the pain side of your business and into the pleasure side. And I believe it starts with culture and core values. So let me tell you about core value creation. That's why this download that I'm going to give you for free in the episode is so important. Core values are built by you, the owner. They're not built by a committee and they're not built by a team of people. They're built by you visualizing the type of business that you want. What colors do you want in the business? What do you want the walls to look like? Do you want the colors to be blue? Do you want the colors to be pink? Do you want the colors to be black? You want them to be red? What are the colors that represent you that you like? What would you want your office to look like? What would you want your trucks to look like? What's the color of your trucks? What's the logo going to look like? What's the, the uniforms going to look like? It literally starts with you visualizing everything that you want your business to be long before your business happens or you get there. Heck, at Commercial Fleet, we're getting ready to move into 13,000 square feet. Why? Because we visualized it. We didn't, like, decide we're going to do it. We saw it before it happened. And the downside to that is for all these years, I didn't visualize much, man. I just visualized not having to work for that guy anymore. And how do we survive? It's not good enough, man. You got to visualize your success and what your business looks like in order for it to ever happen. It starts with visualization. So let me give you a few more things other than colors, right? How you want your walls to be painted. 
What do you want to be known for? How do you want the market to perceive you as an individual? Do you want the market to perceive you as unwavering ethics that you'll never hose a client? Is that important to you? That you'll never take advantage of a client? Boom, we're on the move for great core values. Because once you lock that core value down, guess the ty- guess about the type of people you start to hire. The people with the same value system. You want honest people if that's your core value. I'm not here to tell you what your core values are, although, hell, if we're talking about ethics, it ought to be one of them. My point is when you start to lock down how you want to be perceived, how you want to look, how you want people to act, you will begin to create the foundation of the core values and the company culture. And then you're gonna be relentless to it. You're gonna beat the drum every day and you're gonna hire to those core values. You're gonna fire to those core values. You're gonna manage to those core values. I'll give you one here at Commercial Fleet and probably on another podcast, I'll actually give you, you can see all of the Commercial Fleet core values. But one of them is called personal happiness. We are here because we want to be here. That's the that's the core value, core value number two in our office. Personal happiness, we are here because we want to be here. If that's one of our core values, it think of how it opens the door for us to talk. And it just happened to me this morning. I'm walking in, one of the 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 uh, staff, one of our staff was sitting out front of the office and she looked like she was having a bad day. This is eight eight. 45 this morning, I'm walking in. She looked like she's having a bad day. Now, you walk past your employees and you know they're having a good day or a bad day. She looked like she's having a bad day and it didn't look like it was work-related. Core value number two in our office is personal happiness. I get to stop and say to her, you look unhappy today. Is everything okay? And she says, um, I, just needed to, I just needed a minute to myself. Okay, take as long as you need. Is there anything I can help you with? No, I'm, I'm fine, she said. Are you sure? Is there anything I can help you with? Anything. Doesn't have to be business related, I said. Is there anything I can help you with? Is your freaking husband beating you? Can I help you with that? Is, do you not have money for rent? Can I help you with that? What is it that you need? Why do I have the ability to talk like that to an employee? Because core value number two is personal happiness. I have the freedom because of the core value to have that conversation. Now, do I think that she says, man, this guy's prying in my business. He doesn't have any right to ask me that question. Maybe. But she'd have a lot of accuracy and truth to say that if it wasn't a core value of the organization. But if it's a core value of the organization, everyone in the organization should know that personal happiness matters. If she said to me, I just have to take the day off, I would have said, go tell your boss and take the day off because core value number two matters to us. Go get yourself happy. That's an extreme example of it. And you might say, well, I can't keep all my drivers happy and I can't keep my staff happy. I get it. You're not, your job isn't to make them happy. Your job is to just help them be happy. It's not the company's job to make someone turn someone from unhappy to happy, but it's certainly not the company's job to get in the way of someone's happiness because they don't know what the hell they're doing. Okay, I digressed. Core values need to be no more than four. That's my opinion. No more than four core values. They start with a word. So that's the download that we're giving you today. You're going to go to the link in this podcast and you're going to download a series of words if this matters to you, and it should. And you're just going to read the words and then put a check mark next to the word that resonates with you. Maybe it's not happiness. Maybe it's revenue. Maybe if it's profit. Maybe it's notoriety. Maybe it's influence. It really doesn't matter what words you pick. I just want you to go through this list of words and put a check mark next to the words that matter to you. And when you do the exercise, you may end up with 12 or 15 words that have a check next to it. And then your job is to is to screen that, to cull that list and get it down to four. Four words that absolutely represent you and your business. Now, if you have partners, you need to be doing this with your partners. This isn't something that that if you've got two partners, you do on your own and on Monday you say, hey guys, I've just created our core values. No, if you've got partners, you've got to put this together. But if you don't have any partners, 
By the way, if you don't have any employees, it's the best time to create your core values. It's a heck of a lot harder to do it after you've got employees, which is what we had to do here at Commercial Fleet. We put the business through a thing called the torch, and I'm sure I'll talk more about that on later podcasts because it was a big deal. We had to go back to core values after we had a real business, and that was tough. So it doesn't matter whether you're an established business, a veteran business, a, a startup, you need to get these things dialed in. So you're going to pick four. It starts with the word. You're going to go through this quick exercise by doing the download if you want it. And then you're going to get those words from whatever they started at, 12, 15, 20 words. You're going to get it down to four. And then you're going to relentlessly live your organization to those four words, right? So they could be speed. They could be honesty. They could be ethics. They could be happiness. They could be um, influencer. They could be technology. They could be profit. It doesn't matter, but you need to, to get those four dialed in. If you want to put taglines next to them, that's great. A commercial fleet, uh, you know, our, our number one core value is company profits. And the tagline underneath it is our creative spirit can't be fully realized without consistent profitability. We can't do cool stuff. Can't buy chairs and computers and go to trade shows and, and uh, you know, be in a podcast doing uh, podcast episodes called Driving Success with beautiful cameras and staff if we don't have profits, okay? You can easily put a tagline next to the words. That begins to solidify it. But they need to be on the walls. They need to be hired to. You need to hire people and walk them through your core values and talk to them. And then you need to be relentless to them because it's the downside to core values. Most people in most organizations don't even know what the freaking core values are. They're just some some plaque on a wall that nobody lives and while we don't have it perfect at Commercial Fleet, I think people understand it. They certainly have an idea that when a tough conversation is happening, it's connected to the core values. Um, and then you have to have this clear understanding of what you will tolerate and what you will not tolerate. Because if you say, I want my employees to wear a uniform that has your logo on it and your color scheme, and yet and they're informed of that, and they're hired based on that, and yet every day this one employee keeps coming in without that uniform on, if you don't have that component to the core value, you have a hard time having that discussion. But if it's part of the core value that says, you know, um, professionalism, you get to go to that employee and say, hey, listen, professionalism is one of our core values, and when you show up in shorts and open toe shoes, that's a problem for us. Our clients don't look at us as professional. What if you're in the towing business and you say, when we put that car on the back of the tow truck, not only are we going to put chains to hold it down, but we're going to also strap the wheels. We're going to do a second version of safety and professionalism so that when we show up to the customer's location and drop the vehicle off, the customer sees that we both chained it and we strap the wheels down. But you have, a, you have an employee who doesn't strap, right? They only put the chain on and maybe instead of putting two chains, they only put one chain on. That's a problem. But how do you have the conversation without it being a crystal clear core value of professionalism? Hey, Bubba, we got a little problem here, buddy. Core value number three is professionalism. And when you roll up to your to our customers and you only got one chain instead of two chains and two straps, it doesn't connect to the core values. The core value allows you to have that conversation. I hope I'm getting my point. Final takeaway on core values as it relates to culture. They are not seen every day. Now, they may be up in your office. And you may not be beating the drum of your core values every day. But when there's a problem, the core values give you the opening, the foundation to have the tough conversation with the person that needs to have that conversation. You find out that somebody, um, uh, let's just say it's, it's company profits. And uh, you find out that someone towed a car on the side. And instead of that 75 bucks going into your being billed through the company for your company profits and revenue, they actually pinched the 75 bucks and put it in their pocket and it never showed up in your system. That's a problem, right? Most owners would go crazy over that. It's pretty simple if your core value is company profits. Hey, Bubba, you didn't contribute to our company profits. In fact, you stole. That's a problem, buddy. You're out of here. Versus what I guarantee you've done is you've said, hey, I, I can't talk to Bubba about that. I mean, Bubba's our best driver. 
he he's got it. We got to keep Bubba. He you know he brings in a lot of revenue for us, and we need Bubba's revenue, so we better keep him around. Even though Bubba just stole from you and violated one of your core values, that's the beauty of culture and core values. Now for your insider tip. In this link. I'm giving you the words, the core value step one exercise, which is the picking of these words. Go ahead and download that. Do the episode, uh, do the exercise. Tune in to the next episode where we'll take the core value and culture discussion to the next level. Tell us what you think about the podcast. Leave us your comments and likes and share it. Tell your friends in the industry that there is a new podcast called Driving Success out there that not only talks the fundamentals of transportation, but also applies business strategies to the transportation industry. Heck, we'd appreciate it. And this podcast is powered by Commercial Fleet Financing. So if you need financing for trucks and trailers or equipment, go to commercialfleetfinancing.com. Go to CFF Nationwide. It takes you to the same place. Or call our office at 972-247-8447. We will see you down the road. Thanks for watching Driving Success, powered by Commercial Fleet Financing.